Rebuilding Pinterest pages for performance resulted in a 15% increase in SEO traffic. Good performance equals good business. But that's not the only reason why performance matters. Performance matters also for inclusion. Tim Cadillac, web performance expert, states that poor performance can and does lead to exclusion. If we take the JavaScript processing of the CNN.com web page, it takes 9 seconds slower to load on the average phone. And on a phone Android, under $100, it takes 32 seconds slower. So it means that people with whole devices are excluded from big news data, big news sites. YouTube had the same story. In 2009, YouTube engineer Chris Zacharias tackled the page weight of YouTube and reduced it from 1.2 megabytes to less than 100 kilobytes. He pushed the feature in production and, waiting for the, and waited for the results. He was expecting a uh, decrease in the load page, but when the number came back, the average data latency actually increased, and it didn't make any sense. After a few weeks, he understood that the, where the response was geographic. Under the new version, despite it taking over two minutes to get the first frame of the video, watching a video actually became a real possibility for new people, like in Siberia or South Africa. Performance enable new users. <coughs> Finally, performance matter for the environment. Saint Bowes, author of Future Ethics, states that performance good practices have well-known benefits to usability, but are also acts of environmental protection. I need to buy a new phone. My battery does not last full day anymore. Does it ring a bell? New devices hide performance issues in our websites. Reducing the perceived need to work on performance, making it slower on whole devices, pushing users to buy new devices. Hi, Numele Meoeste Mathieu. I guess <laughs> I got it right. I am a VP of Engineering at Teodo and we are building websites for our clients. This is actually my first time in Romania, so if you have plans to go out or to have a drink, uh, I'm here until Monday because uh, there are no flights in, to Paris until Monday. And uh, if you have issues with uh, the colors in my presentation, that may be because I'm colorblind. So, now that we see that performance is important, how do we achieve performance on the web? For that, we need to go back through time. Today is the reign of single-page applications. These are applications built with Angular, with React, with Vue.js, and HTML is computed client-side. The key word for this practice is interactiveness. We have applications 
that respond to clicks. We can, we can like a tweet be, uh, without the page being reloaded. We can scroll to the infinite. We have push notification. Single page application make great product possible. Before then, server rendering was king. We had programming language like PHP, Python, Ruby, and they take care of computing the HTML. So the HTML was computed server side. The keyword at the time was dynamism. It allowed us to build sites like MySpace. People were actually able to put content on the website and to see it live right after. And if we go to the beginning, the first ever page on the web was built in pure HTML. This was pure HTML file served by a server and it was simple, scalable and fast. Yet, during our journey to interactiveness and dynamism, we lost profound. Today, the average page is now the size of the ori original Doom game, which is quite big. So, can we reconcile the interactiveness and the dynamism of today's application with the performance of the 90s? Meet GetVJS. GetVJS is a combination of a static site generator and a single page application. The most important thing with Gatsby is that you could in React. So if you are a React developer, it's simple. You can use React components, you can use React libraries. It's easy to jump in. But Gatsby had a second step. At build time, Gatsby will compile your HTML, no, will compile your application, your React application to HTML. The result for a user, for example, if you want to display the home page, so a user will say, okay, can I have the home page please? And the server will answer, okay, I made a snapshot of the page during the build time, and here it is. I don't have to process anything. The user has the content, has the content fast, and right after, the React um, environment is loaded. So that following navigation and subsequent navigation is managed by React. So it seems pretty cool. Um, I was wondering, is it be that fast? I wanted to try it on the website and I built a website with Gatsby and this is what I want to share with you, the lesson I learned with Gatsby. Um, First, I need to tell you the stories. Um, like many stories, I guess, it all started with a beer. So I was made with my colleague, Nicolas, and we, was, we were having a beer. And we were talking about the wonderful people we met during various meetups in Paris. In fact, in Paris, you have a lot of communities. If you want to talk and to meet developers around Android, JavaScript, PHP, it's quite easy. There is a meetup every week. At the same time, the Jamstack was rising. I won't get too much in details the Jamstack because I will speak about it later, but this is a modern web development architecture based on client-side JavaScript API high and pre-built markup. The thing you need to know is that there is a community, but there was not a community in Paris. So Nicolas and I decided to create and to gather the Jamstack community in Paris. So far, we have grown up to 300 members and hosted five meetups in different companies. And quickly, we wanted a website to communicate, but we wanted a fast website. Because we are promoting the Jamstack, 
which is uh, delivering fast application. We wanted a showcase which is fast. And we decided to use Gatsby. To manage the meetup, we are using meetup.com. This is a website when, where organizers can actually create a community and create events. The good thing about Meetup is that you will advertise your Meetup to people who might be interested. And people can actually respond to events. So we can say next week there is a Jamstack event and people can actually RSVP and say, OK, I will be there. <coughs> so our needs for the website was quite simple. Display Meetups from the meetup.com API having a picture gallery so that we can show to people how is it to participate to this kind of meetup and of course performance. This is how the site ended, just as a teasing, but let's dive. So first, display meetup from meetup.com API. With Gatsby, when you want to display data, you need first to pull the data from sources, two, query data with GraphQL, and three, pass the data, the data to React components. In order to pull the data from a source, Gatsby offers source plugins. You have source plugins for everything, for Vimeo, Twitter, Drupal, Medium, and Actually, the big advantage of plugin is that the maintainer of the plugin takes care of the format of the API. So you don't have to know what is and how the API is formatted. The plugin will take care of it. So community created a lot of plugins, and it's quite easy to create one for your private API. There was not a meetup plugin yet, so we created one. To use a plugin, that's simple. A plugin is just the npm package. So you run npm install, and then you have to configure it. The main file to configure something in Gatsby is the gatsbyconfig.js. Here, what you can see is that we activate the plugin, and we are saying, OK, take the events on the Jamstack Parry group. Then, at build time, the data is fetched and mapped. When the data is in memory, you can access it with GraphQL. So, what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a query language which has been created and promoted by Facebook and the main advantage of GraphQL is that you can request only the data you want. In Gatsby, the main advantage with GraphQL for source plugin is that you have only one interface to query your data. To help you begin with GraphQL, Gatsby offers you GraphQL. This is the playground when you can play with your data. So, on the left of the screen, you have all the queries you can actually execute in your Gatsby website. There are some queries which are provided by Gatsby, like obtaining information on your website, and there are other queries which are provided by your source plugin. So here I have Meetup Events and Meetup Group. The interface allowed me to craft my GraphQL query because I didn't knew GraphQL and this strange syntax. So I can just check and say, oh, I want the name, I want the description, and on the GraphQL, I can say what is the data I would get back. So here, I'm crafting my query, and I say I want the name of the meetup, I want the description of the meetup, and the list of the events, with some description, 
ID, a link, a date, and a status. Once you get your query right, you can use the code exporter to actually get the code you want to put it in Gatsby. Okay, so data is good. In my case, I use the static query hook, so GraphQL can give you the exact code you need to put in your Gatsby site. Now that you have your query, it's quite simple. In a component, here in my home page, you can use the Ustatic query hook and put the exact same query you craft in GraphQL. After that, you can just pass the data to React components. So your React components will receive the data props and the data props will actually contain all the data. So here I can um, go through all the meetup events. Add a bit of styling, run Gatsby build, and hopefully this is what we got right after. So this is the 1.1 version of the Jamstack Paris. And as you can see, we have all the meetup from meetup.com. So if you want to work with Gatsby, a checklist when working with data is one, look for, install and configure the related source plugin for the data you want. Two, get your GraphQL right with GraphQL. And three, inject it to your React components. Another feature I was looking for is a picture gallery. I wanted to put some photo and actually show to people how is it to come to the Jamstack meetup. But if you already worked with images, it's often hard because you have a lot of questions. How can you serve high quality images to high resolution devices? How to optimize image size of small devices, I will not to wait for the full download of image before rendering the pages. In Gatsby, images are data like photo. So, if we take back the checklist, first you need to install and configure the related source plugin. Here I took the Gatsby source file system. This is a plugin which allows me to source data from my file system. And I configure it to say, okay, I want you to look the image in this folder and add a tag, the tag name, uh, the tag gallery, so I can fetch them. Two, get your GraphQL right with GraphQL. So, what you can see is with the GraphQL and with GraphQL we can specify the width and the height of the image. This is quite useful because at build time Gatsby will automatically create the um, version of your images with the good dimensions. Actually, it will do more. It will also generate a bigger picture. So, for high resolution device, you can have high resolution images. Last thing Gatsby does with images, which is quite cool, is a blur. So I put my browser in slow 3G so you can have a look. Okay, so I think you saw it. When you reload the page, you have first a blurred version of the image. And in fact, what Gatsby does is when it pushes you the HTML version, the first version, it will give you a low quality images 
which enable you to have fast load time and when the React is rendered, it will actually load the high resolution image. An option which I found and didn't knew uh, what it was doing was trace SVG. And the best way to show you is an example. So here, with trace SVG, what Gatsby does is he creates the SVG with the same um, contour, this is the same look like of uh, the picture. So when you load it, you have a smooth transition. Actually, I put the two images together so you can have a look. And this is the SVG Gatsby generated. Finally, performance. Here, what I want to show you is the built-in optimization Gatsby does automatically and which enables performance on the website. In fact, in Gatsby, all this performance optimization are by default. Kyle Matthews, the creator, states that he designed Gatsby with the goal that when using it, it will be really hard to build a slow site. It's not easy to build a fast one, it's hard to build a slow one. To do that, there is code splitting. Problems you may have with single page application is often you have a big fat JavaScript. A big fat JavaScript with all the data of your components, but it doesn't make sense because on the page you are loading, maybe you don't need this, this component. So the goal of code splitting is to only bring to the users what he needs when it's needed. We will split our JavaScript in multiple chunks and when the user makes an action, he will only receive the related JavaScript. If you want to do it yourself, this is quite hard. You have to go with Webpack and Webpack is not fun. What Gatsby does is he splits your code and your data based on page. So he will actually actually looks what are the components of your home page or the gallery page and create chunk. This is the output of Webpack Analyzer bundle, which gives you the chunk of your JavaScript and each color in another chunk. So here we can see that we have two chunks, the home page and the gallery. And for example, get the image is only loaded on gallery. And in fact, this is true because on my home page, I don't use image. So when a user first loads the home page, he wouldn't need to have get the image. Another feature is link prefetching. So if we say that Gatsby create chunk based on page, we could think that when we want to go through another link in the application, we would have to wait for the download of the code and the data. But Gatsby does, when you over a link, it will actually prefetch the data and the code. And it gave you precious milliseconds before the user clicks and really this gives you um, a sentiment of it's really fast. Gatsby are also built in optimization like native lazy loading so I don't have in my side but if for example I decided to put multiple meetups I would have native lazy loading to, to load them so through two by two. Inline critical CSS Gatsby will actually know what is the CSS which is used of the page and the viewport you are displaying and inline it in the HTML, preventing you to download some stupid. <coughs> and finally, HTTP2. I don't know much about HTTP2, but from my understanding, it allows you to uh, have multiple requests in parallel, so it could, in, 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 it could increase performance. 
in my opinion, Gatsby does fulfill its promises because this is the lighthouse report I made on the website I, I generated. Um, I have a 96 performance, 100 accessibility, 100 best practice, and 100 SEO. But I, I didn't do anything. Now, Gatsby has some limits, of course. It's not a silver bullet. The first one is that the build time is correlated to content size. So, Gatsby will load all your content at build time. So, the more content you have, the more time it will take to build. And we had uh, someone during a meetup who came and the build time was actually 15 minutes. Another problem is that error may be mysterious. So the good thing is I don't see Webpack at all, but when Webpack doesn't work... Sorry. To sum up, building this website was a really good experience. The documentation is great with Gatsby, the community is positive and helpful, so if you want to start with Gatsby, it's easy. I also like the hybrid approach of static and dynamic, because I didn't mention that, but in the end you have a full working React application, so if you have data which uh, move a lot, you can always uh, not pass through GraphQL and only use the React environment. And finally, I still look for a professional project to use Gatsby with, because my project is cool, but it's quite small, I don't have much content, and I really wonder how Gatsby is with a big fat project. If you want to begin with Gatsby, there is the documentation, there are videos on Hagrid, which are really cool, and github.com, of course. Finally, Gatsby and Static Site Generator are only a part of a bigger ecosystem, which is the Jamstack. So, the Jamstack has static site generator, but also powerful APIs and services like Netlify, hosting platform, Halgolia, which is a search engine. And I encourage you to look through all these tools because they integrate really well with Gatsby. And before leaving, I want to show you quickly a taste of the Gatsby scene. So, Gatsby pushed a new feature, like four months ago, which enabled to share design components and set up plugins easily, and still ordering configuration and overriding. So, the Jamstack Paris website I built, I transformed, transformed it to a team. And I want to show you how easy it is to use. Can you see the screen? Yeah? Okay. 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 First thing, you need to add some dependencies. You need to have React, React DOM, Gatsby and the team I developed. So, I can run the command, but I fear from the hotel network. So, actually I can take the node modules and the package JSON of the libraries I show you because I downloaded a bit earlier.
Okay, so I only have the package JSON, node modules with React, Gatsby, and the team. The last thing I need to add is a Gatsby. Gatsby config. JS file. Can you see the code? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So this is the configuration of the plugin. So here I have a basic configuration for another website I've generated, but we can say GDG Cryova. The best Romanian community with a cup of what do you drink? Beer? <laughs> okay, it, it always works. Then I need the URL where I can download the meetups, the events of the meetup. So I saw that you have. In fact, GDG Cryova. Okay. Configuration. So, don't have video. We need to configure a link to propose new talk. Uh, GDG Cryova, yes. I think I found it. And the next thing, we will say it in English, and the colors are not really important. So, I had it on this file. And Gatsby actually see that this is a Gatsby website, which is using a Gatsby theme. Okay, so you have the first version of the what could be the GTG Cryovac meetups. I think we should uh, replace the Eiffel Tower and put some description of what is the, the event. Actually, I did it a bit earlier. And the last thing I want to show you is... So here I configure the meetup with all the configuration possible and I can build the website. So right now is taking the hidden from meetup.com and creating a full working HTML website in the public directory and and now some services is Netlify, which is a hosting platform specialized in static sites. So here, okay, no, no, full screen. I put the public, it's just drag and drop. You wait like a few seconds. And so, right now, you have a full working GDG Cryova Meetup live in production. And it took me 10 minutes before the conference. So, I think... I think that's all. <laughs> so, thank you. Do we have questions for Matthew? Yes. So, can we use Gatsby with Angular, for instance, or just React? Mm, no. Gatsby. Can we use it with something else than React? Uh, Gatsby is uh, React and TypeScript, uh, but TypeScript in React. Yeah. Uh, but you have other tools I know for Vue.js, which is 
the same as Gatsby, but I never saw an equivalent for Angular. Okay. Another thing, uh, practically, you, if I so correctly, you build a website, and to test it, you, you have to build it or not. Like, you know, use the build command, because if it takes too much time, I mean, from a development perspective, you practically waste a lot of time changing one thing and doing the build and waiting to, you know, see the line change. So how, how it, does this happen, actually? Yes, in fact, when working, so you have also uh, developed and it will build the website and look for the modification to only build the incremental things. So if you had something, you don't have to make the full build again. Now, okay, so you said at some point that it could take up to 15 minutes, but yes. that's like a rebuild, let's say. But when you're doing small changes, it just refreshes, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. Okay, other questions? Okay then, thank you Matthew. Thank you very much.